What we're demonstrating for you today is an Anderson forehead capping machine. It's a fully automatic capper. Uh, right now it's set up for a 38 millimeter cap and about a 12 ounce bottle. Um, Clyde Morris has asked us to test the machine for his bottle and we've almost never encountered this in 25 years, but this bottle actually fits almost every change part on the machine. Uh, I'm going to take you through some of the features. The machine has a uh, tabletop chain conveyor which travels through uh, and runs independently, running at all times independent of the capper. It's driven by the U.S. Motors Vary Drive right here. It has a variable speed control which by turning this, it's a mechanical drive, will change the speed. Also at the end of the conveyor while we're down here, there is a small I by banner here. This is to detect a backup downstream. In other words, if bottles were to start backing up at a short delay time and it would block this, it would shut the capper off. Unfortunately, we're going to show that in a minute when the capper is running because the conveyor will keep running. Uh, if you come over here around to this side, this is of course for storage purposes, is, is, is removed, is a large bulk hopper which then mounts up on the plate here and feeds caps into the vibratory bowl which sorts out the caps up here. You can see the vibratory bowl is running right now. I'll get around the other side I'll demonstrate that for you. Um, the caps are fed out of the bowl with the thread upward facing skyward. They then invert as they go down the chute and then they're picked off by the button arm and then fed to the cap chuck. The chuck comes down then tightens on the uh, container. Also, one, one little note, this has its own vibratory feed out of it, that is the bolt hopper. This one is a switching device that will tell it to come on and off as the level changes in the bolt uh, in the, in the bulk feeder. There's an operator control station here, has your power on off, has a jog up here for setting up. The start stop operates the conveyor there. Power runs through the conveyor, so the conveyor must be running in order to run the capper, which is these two switches here. Start, turns on the capper, and it will just continue running. Now, we've it's been disabled, and the former owner may have not used it. This little air operated switch, and normally, keep in mind, there would be conveyor rails on here, whatnot, to guide the bottles, but for storage and whatnot, they're, they're removed. Um, if this is not depressed at all time with bottles passing by and a, and, a, and a space opens up, it automatically lifts the cap chute out of the way. By, by engaging an air cylinder at the bottom of the cap chute, lifts it up and doesn't allow the button to take a cap so that that, that station would not just have a cap stuck in it and drop it back in the machine, causing a possible jam up later on. I'm going to show you right now, the container actually fits the timing screws here. Now naturally there would be, we can just do this by hand now, because there would be uh, rails guiding this. And it would come in, it would start riding in, in along with the worm, this fits perfectly. And then it would travel in through there, goes around the grippers, you'll see it comes out. And actually, what I'm going to do here, now we can't do it automatically, although the caps do fit down to the chute, the only thing I'm going to show you here, this is called the button and what happens, I'm going to walk around the back, I may be able to show you this better. As the cap, and you'll see that these do fit in here. In fact. Let me just take this one. I'm going to stay there, Tim. I'm just going to turn the power on for a minute. Um, you'll watch. It will pick up the cap, but it doesn't fit that well. Now, what's happening, obviously, is one cap in here. So, And you see, it didn't go on that well, but because it wasn't on there, the, the button arm is, the button that's on there is just very, very slightly larger than the original cap here. You know, you can easily push it on, but you have to give it a little bit of a force, and that shouldn't be. So, for it to, in operation, you want this to be just a hair thinner. It's got these straight sides, so it can pass underneath here as it rotates around. But, if this was the correct size, and by this, and what happens, there's a screw under here, this gets removed, the machine shop can easily reduce the diameter, give them a sample cap, and they'll make it. So, it should fit on there with a little bit of breathing room. Now, in other words, but when this was handed to this, it comes up into here. You'll see by pushing up, and you want to be careful of these, they will bite you. You'll grab the cap. Now, this has a rubber line chuck, so you may want to put new rubbers in there so everything's the same and, and in top premium condition because they've obviously been sitting. 
Now I'm going to demonstrate for you right now, it will cap the bottle as well. Um, just got to time this right. Let me see where I am and count backwards. Okay, here we go. This should be in here. Oh, I missed. Now watch when it comes around, it'll open up and drop the cap. Sorry, we're going to try that again for you. <laughs> Okay, up. One right, up. Okay. Now, that should be about right. Obviously, we're not using this thing, and we're actually getting a really good torque on that. <clears throat> Probably, and there seats the ring, everything perfectly. But like I say, you know, for optimum performance, and you don't want to have anything missing, you want to, you know, replenish what our small little rubber line here on the face of the jaws. You see these this mantle? We can give you some vendors that will actually recreate these shots or make you new jaws with inside them. Most machine shops can do something like this. The grippers, as you see, which hold the bottle as it goes around, you have to stabilize that. Can they actually just have, and Tammy, follow me over here. There's some spare parts over here, and I'll show you on this just as easily. This is a typical bottle gripper. You see, they use a piece of, and they chose to use, this is almost like a belting, like a very rough shot rubber material. There's a small screw that comes in at the back. So what they do is they actually glue the material in and just use a couple of screws to hold it in place to make sure they're flush seating so they won't damage the bottle. So these can easily be removed, scraped off, put some nice new material on, maybe a white or something that's more conducive with your bottle. And while I'm over here, some of the other change parts, there's another set of grippers, there's another chute. These apparently seem to be for about a 28 millimeter cap. You'll notice the knurling, which is the little lines inside the edge, this may have been a metal cap. So these are the four pieces you would change. You would keep the housing and change this diameter in here. And the whole mechanical mechanism, as well as the spring-loaded clutch in there, which allows you to establish your torque, would all work very well. Just by changing it, as long as you have this. There's some other um, star wheels and center guys here. These are for an eight ounce bottle. It also is possible to modify those to use them for a larger size. Um, and like I said, the same thing here, these grippers and everything, I wanted to show you that. But I'm kind of surprised that uh, everything works as, as well as it does. Oh, so I meant to show you this, but I started to before. This little eye over here, should there be a jam up the bottle start coming backwards, there's a, uh, a small delay in here. It would block it, and you can see behind me that the capper has shut off automatically. Then that were to open up. There's once again, small delay, or you may have to restart it from here once the delay is clear. And that's usually a safety how most of the eyes work. Um, and one thing more around the back, we're running, by the way, on 220 volts, three phase. This is the bolt here. Right here. You know, you can crank it up to a really high vibration, continue feeding them out. This is also adjustable in and out, back and forth, allow you to get the position of the end of the chute right where, you see we actually have it so it's just almost touching each one of these, uh, each one of the button arms as they go past. Also, this is the air solder that would actually lift up to keep it from getting a cap. Kind of very simple. Don't do that. Like I said, that's some of the adjustments that have to be made. We just wanted to find if we can cap with it 
and use the existing parts, which I think is very successful. Um, besides a little cleanup, some small minor parts. I don't think there's any much this, this machine will need to go into an application with this container. Also, one other thing you may want to note, uh, as we went through this, you saw a small conveyor here. We have the original filler which ran with this, which is an eight piston, uh, piston filler, which will fill a maximum of 16 ounces per cylinder. Um, and that connects onto here, and there will be a small uh, uh, guide rail, which will slide the bottles over to here. So, one more time. I really, I'm really impressed with how, how well these things run on this. Because that saves a tremendous amount of money in a set of change parts that will